forget about a smartwatch, as impressive as it might be, or a device that tracks your fitness. Not much of a runner anyway, but that's not why I'm saying that. This time on Digital Futures, we're talking about the next wave of wearables. Things like hearables, ingestibles, embeddables, and dare I say it, the invisibles. Now this, for instance, is a prototype of an empathic tech device that uses my body's natural biorhythm to alter my mood. And I'll let the founder tell you how in just a minute. Today I've tracked down Carl Thomas, the founder of Smart Headphones Audio Wings and curator of Wearables London, and Jack Hooper, one of the founders of Doppel. Guys, thanks for being in my hot seat today. Right, thank you. Great. So listen, let's fast track to three to five years from now. What might we expect a wearable as we know it today to do for us then in our day-to-day -day lives? Wow, <laughs> such a question. Putting on the spot here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I guess a lot of analysts have made quite grandiose reports that by 2020 there's going to be some 350 million wearable devices out that have been shipped. And it's my belief that the vast majority of these will be pretty much multi-purpose devices. So a lot of tracking, a lot of monitoring of our data to then give us some form of experience, whether that be augmented, whether that be um, whether that be virtual, whether that be diminished. It's all about giving us an experience that we can then use to interact with our environment and also just to enhance our lives. Yeah, I mean, I think if it's going to go away from the quantified self movement, which is reasonably niche, um, then it's going to have to become something that fits more seamlessly with people's lives. It's going to be less kind of Star Trek style screens and more fashion, mm. basically. Yeah, and actually that builds well on a point that you made in an article recently where you said the core theme of wearables to you is actually removing that interface between ourselves and tech. Absolutely. So then should the wearable of the future really feel like a part of us? Is that really quite natural? Wearables in itself is just part of a process to get to what Ray Kurzweil calls this whole singularity, this whole fusion between man and machine. And because of Peterson's law, because of Moore's law, with technology becoming smaller and more intimate, I think it's natural that we're going to have the ability to have a very natural interface with technology. And it's, you know, eventually going to actually be embedded into us. So Jack, you class Doppel as empathic tech, right? So to me, a big selling point of something like that would be that it potentially does something to the wearer rather than just tracking or monitoring. Talk us through how this works. The way we developed Doppel is we weren't actually trying to make a piece of wearable technology. We were doing research into something called psychophysiology, but really this is about how our minds understand our so you stumbled onto it, really. Yeah. I Best mean, things happen that way. Yeah, I mean, it was it was interesting research that we were doing, but it was it just became apparent that a wearable was the best way to apply right. what we'd found. Um, so what it does is, it's similar to music, actually. It provides a beat that you feel on the inside of your wrist. Um, and humans naturally respond to rhythm. Um, an upbeat song gets you going, a downbeat song chills you out. But what we found is you can create the same effect with a beat that you feel instead of hear. So we call it empathic technology because it's built on how people work. It works in the way that people work. Right, that's really fascinating. Well, I've got one. I'm taking it home with me. <laughs> Just thought I'd let you know. Um, so, Carl, Moore's law states that the smaller a component, the more efficient and powerful it actually can become. I guess they we're seeing this a little bit with the evolution of hearables. First of all, <laughs> Tell us what that is about and talk to us a little bit about audio rings. Yeah, sure. So I guess the whole notion of hearables is that you've got technology which pretty much you wear daily in headphones. Now we've realised that the ear is pretty much a biometric playground. You can really glean a lot about the body just from the ear. So it's really combining those two concepts to have smart headphones or smart earbuds that at the very least track our, our biometrics. And with Audio Wings, we did a lot of research into the headphone market initially because I realised that my cousin was buying, I think it was Beats headphones for a couple of hundred pounds. And I thought, well, what do these actually do? So we realised that there was a real interesting way to understand how people were listening to music and start to give them an experience that enabled them to, you know, almost change their emotional state with headphones specifically. So what we're doing at Audio Wings, we're putting a number of different sensors into headphones to understand how people respond to music and then start to play back relevant different types of music and other content by using a really kind of immersive um, environment called spatial sound. Great, well, I've got a doppel, so I better be on your mailing list for an Audio Wings <laughs> device. 
So here's a slightly amusing question, which I don't think you guys were really expecting. Would you swallow an ingestible sensor if it meant that it was tracking your vitals and perhaps relaying that to your GP, let's say, or helping you avoid the need for an invasive procedure? The big thing would be, do I really want that data specifically about me going to pharmaceutical companies or, okay, maybe not so much in the UK, but in other countries to my insurance or, or things like that. But there's clearly a benefit there if it was very well protected. So less yeah, trepidation sure. about actually putting a digital sensor in your body and more about what people are going to do with that data. What about you? Also, I mean, for me personally, Let's put it this way, if it prevented me going to the doctor often, then yeah, I would definitely would swallow Nobody it. Nobody here right now, actually. <laughs> well, great. Actually. <laughs> I mean, fundamentally, if we do have something that monitors us regularly and that it enables us to actually get, you know, diagnostic information from someone who's accredited on a regular basis remotely, then yeah, I'd absolutely take that. You okay. know, As Jack said, it's all about the benefit that it provides you. Okay, well, on that note, guys, thanks for having this chat with me today. I think it's been a really playful, healthy debate. And thank you for watching.